Hello everyone and welcome to Kayla's Mesh Mixer Tutorials. Today I'm going to be showing you the different types of brushes and how they work. So first we're going to go to the Sculpt tool, we're going to go here and we're going to click Drag. The Drag tool and every brush here all have different fall offs that you can use. Me, I prefer the one in the middle, the little rounded circle guy because I don't usually use much flat things. There's Bubble going on here and he's my favorite guy. What Bubble does is just goes like this and makes kind of a flat round wide shape. Little guy beside him here which is a little bit tinier does the same thing but on a smaller scale. Then there's the flat rectangular guy which tries to keep the top as flat as possible while it's pulling it up. As you can see tries to rectangular it out. There's the triangle which is great for spikes if you want like a fat spike going on there. And then teeny weeny spike for all those tiny little porcupine hairs if you want to make a porcupine. I'm going to stick with the bubble as much as I can today to keep everything nice and even. So after the drag, we have the draw tool. The draw tool allows you to add more mesh on as well as drag the mesh around at the same time. So as you can see, it drew more on and it's dragging it out. If you go across really quickly, it'll just draw. And if you pull away from it, it will drag the object up. The difference between that and Draw 2 is that Draw 2 does not drag it, so it stays perfectly onto the mesh and it will only draw on top of what's already existing. So as you can see, no fall off, but it does not make it nice and smooth. The Flatten tool is as it says, it flattens things. So I'm just going to raise the strength here so you guys can see it and raise the size. So depending on how big your brush is, and as you can see, it'll flatten, so it's flattening those spikes I made earlier down to go back into the mesh. But it does sometimes leave a little bit of errors because I had to flatten a whole bunch of weird shapes. Usually it works pretty fine though, smooths everything out, and flattens it to the best of its ability. The inflate tool is just like a balloon. Blowing hot air into it, you click, and it expands the mesh and makes that area build up. You can do it nice and slow and it'll just nicely build up your mesh very slowly, almost like adding a little bit more clay to a sculpture. And it's really nice to do. So you can do it slow or fast depending on how high your strength is on the brush. The pinch tool pinches pieces together. So I'm just going to go over here to where you see these two pieces. If I wanted them to connect, I would stick my little dot between the two click and it will drag the pieces together trying to make them into one cohesive line. You can even try to fix up little cracks and holes that you see in front of the mesh but it will end up shrinking it a little bit from what you were using. So be kind of careful when using this and when you expand it it can cause the holes to reappear again you might have to pinch it shut once more. The move key does almost the same thing as the drag but instead it only takes the area that you've clicked and drags it around. So it's not dragging the whole mesh, it's just dragging the small section that you grabbed. So it'll only pull the section of the area that you're grabbing, it's not dragging the entire mesh along with it. Making a little bit slightly different shapes and maintaining most of the integrity of your file. Not all the integrity, but as much as it can. The spikes tool is as it says, and I'm just going to switch it to the tiny point so you can see it. You click and it adds teeny weeny little spikes all over your model. So if you want to make like a spiky porcupine or little bumps on a monster, this is the quick and easy way to do it. Now the paint vertex key, when you first use it, looks like it doesn't work at all and you're like, why isn't this working? Why can't I see anything? I have my color on and it's not going. Well, this is because you need to actually click the space key and change your setting from being this green circle here, which is great to use when using the stamp tool. It's the only way the stamp will show. You have to change it to this blue shader. So you click it and then you can see actually where the blue was and where you've drawn it. You could take the color wheel here, change it to whatever color you want, change the strength and the size, and color the model. If you save a file in any format that accepts colored print, multicolored printing, it will print the object in those colors as long as you save it in a color safe format. STL will not save color and print in one solid. 
Not a lot of printers do multi-extruding that are easily available, so usually this tool doesn't need to be used as much. Now the attract tool is a little different. When you click it, it's going to tell you no target surface is set. To set a target surface, you can either go to the object browser here and click on one of the magnets, and that'll set your target, or you can go to the actions key and click set as target. So whatever object you have selected in the object browser will become the target mesh. What you do after is select the one that's not the target, so I selected this bottom piece here. Click sculpt, make sure you're on attract, and click the mesh below that you are selected to, and it will drag the pieces all the way up to the top of the mesh until it hits, and then it'll stop. So I'm just going to do this from narrow you'll be here so you can see. I'm going to raise the strength up, and the more strength you have, the faster it goes. It hits the top, and then it stops. So that way you can build the mesh together and have it nice, hard, and stable for when you connect it to make sure there's no holes as you're going along, but it will take a little bit longer. To stop it, all you have to do is click clear target, and you get back to your weird one that's no longer see-through to not be able to see if it's attracted fully or not. The next tool is the Bubble Smooth. What it does is it smooths the object out. I'm just going to make sure I'm on Bubble Smooth there. And it fattens at the same time. So it's doing a fattening and a smoothing at the same time. Which is really nice because if you need to get rid of anything or you want something to be smoothed out but you don't want it to lose its fatness, you can keep it. It will shrink some pieces down to make it line up. Because it's smoothing, it's not actually adding more mesh. It's taking what it has and smoothing it out while trying to fatten it up. The Shrink Smooth does the opposite, but still smooths it. And it shrinks things down as it's smoothing. So it makes a tighter, cleaner circle. As you can see, it will even delete pieces it doesn't need to be able to smooth it out and make everything nice and together. The Robust Smooth is a little bit different. What it does is it takes the shape of the mesh and tries to work with it in order to properly smooth. It is a slower process, but it's kind of handy when you don't know if you want something to go smaller or larger. It'll work with the shape of the mesh and try to maintain it as best as possible. Now the next tools you're going to need the wire frame for. So what you're going to do is you're going to once again as I showed in my previous video, go to Show Wireframe or click the W key in the View section. And as you can see, we have our whole bunch of triangles. So when you go to the brush, I'm just going to go back to my circular guy here. I've been off him for a while. You go to Refine Plus, and it'll add more triangles to the mesh. As you can see, many, many more triangles are being formed, which allow you to make more complicated works and keep all the detail. The Reduce Mesh We'll actually minus it and make it more simple. And then our nice, wonderful little adaptive reduce takes what it sees and keep, tries to maintain the shape while lowering the amount of triangles at the same time. It doesn't always work, especially with these spiky kind of shapes, but it tries to adaptively reduce to fit to what you need without losing as much detail as quickly. Now the zipper is just kind of a neat tool. And it works much better than the pinch, and I do recommend it over the pinch tool. And to use this one, I'm going to have to make a giant hole in my mesh. So I'm just going to click the select here, and I'm going to click edit, and I'm going to click discard, or just click the X key on your computer. As you can see, there is a giant hole. If you take the sculpt, and you go down to zipper edge, it will, as long as you're holding onto the sides, and just drag around the sides, slowly start closing the mesh while adding triangles. In to fill in those little gaps, making a perfectly solid and fixed mesh with little to no errors. So it's going to adaptively fix all the little problems, but you just got to drag it around until it finds where that missing section is, until it fully zips it shut. So as you can see, it takes a little bit sometimes because on the rare occasion you will grab a spot that is not part of the mesh you're fixing. But it'll adaptively fix everything, so sometimes, even to fix a bigger hole, you have to go away from the object to get it to go. It's a little tricky to get it to go perfect, especially when you have a weird hole like I did. 
but you get the idea. It does shut the mesh, which is a great thing to do. And if the zipper can't get something, just grab the pinch tool and pinch together, and you're a okay. So, guys, that was all the brushes for today. And also, just so you know, the secondary brushes are kind of important. You can either have it set so as you're using the other tools, the shrink smooth's automatically working, the robust smooth is automatically working, or the bubble smooth. I just like going into the main brushes instead of having to hold shift while I'm working the entire time we're using another brush. So if you have a secondary brush set, for example, bubble smooth, and you're on drag, you hold the shift key and it'll do a drag while smoothing out the bubbles at the same time. You can do this with the same with the robust smooth and the shrink smooth. Just remember you have to be entirely holding the shift keys the whole time, which I find a little bit annoying and a little bit hard on the fingers, so I don't usually use those smooth tools until I'm perfectly happy and I'm ready to smooth it out and the robust at the same time. It just makes it a little trickier having to hold two keys at the same time in order to get my mesh to work. But guys, that's how to use the brushes. This is Kayla Prousers, aka a Laxca Pro, signing off.